Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. Good morning, everyone. It's good to meet you all again today. This morning, I was uh, a little busy. And um, a while ago, because I feel it's a little tired today. So uh, I was joking with uh, the volunteers. I said, uh, today's talk is no talk, and that this is the real talk. Now, actually, Diamond Sutra mentioned this to us. The real talk is no talk at all, no words at all. But as a human being, and before we achieve the enlightenment, we still need to talk. <laughs> so that's why I encourage myself you know, to build up the energy, <clears throat> to cultivate my mind. I do hope that uh, within next 20 or 25 minutes, I can deliver this talk. Today, we are going to continue to study this, this book. The Buddha Speaks. And uh, right now, we are studying the subject of clarity. I did mention this many times. In Buddhism, um, we do say we need to believe okay, in the Dharma. We need to believe in Buddha's teaching. But actually, uh, we also emphasize on how to understand Buddha's teaching and use the teaching to clear our thoughts, to guide our thoughts, make it clear so we can produce right understanding. When we have a right understanding, then we can handle all kinds of uh, changes skillfully yeah. and always maintain on the positive side and to develop our life. Today, I wanted to mention one concept. That is, the attitude and the reaction of ourselves will determine the consequence that we are going to receive in the future. The attitude or reaction that we have right now, it's going to determine the next moment's consequence, or next day's consequence, or next month's consequence. Uh, consequence. So today, I wanted to mention this part. Yeah, how should we react in daily life? What kind of attitude we should <clears throat> have in daily life? Yeah, positive attitude, right action, definitely it's going to produce, you know, positive consequence. And also, <clears throat> I wanted to invite you to think that uh, when we say, I have, I have a problem, and uh, every time when we have a problems, then we are going to think about how to solve the problem, okay. And also, when we say, this is my problem, first, I wanted, uh, I wanted to uh, 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 share this with you, that actually, when we say this is a problem, we should have a clear understanding, where does this problem come from? In my personal understanding, basically, there are two uh, ways, yeah, the first, you know, one is uh, actually some problems basically accumulate or developed by our, ourselves from your body, from your mind. Actually, no other problems except yourself, from yourself, your body and the mind. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of people, whenever we feel not comfortable, 
we are not happy, we are not satisfied, we always complain outside world, complain on others. Actually, it's not the correct way. Yeah. For example, in 2013, I was very ill. That illness lasts almost one year. It was difficult for me, you know, to deal with it. And uh, in those months, I observed myself. And uh, I understood that uh, my problem is my body, my physical body. Even I don't want to develop this problem into my mind. That means physically I'm ill, but mentally I want to be healthy. I don't, I don't want to be ill like the body. So actually, after a few months, one day I noticed that uh, I cannot continue to serve the temple, serve the center, to perform, you know, uh, a lot of uh, services or ceremonies at the temple. I cannot provide talks, you know, uh, deliver talks. So I made decision. I wrote two letters, one to Venerable Jinghai, another letter to Board of Directors. I wanted to take a break. Let me rest for a while. It's time for me to rest myself, to take care of myself. So after I wrote those two letters, then I remind myself, always think in this way. Yeah. Now it's time for me to rest myself. It's time for me to observe myself. It's time for me to test my practice. Check on my practice. How good am I? Because I'm facing a problem. This is the illness I'm having with the body. So <clears throat> by this kind of, kind of a contemplation, fortunately, I did not allow my body illness to disturb my mind within the ear. And uh, finally, I recover recovered from this illness. Yeah, I think I have to say uh, thanks to Buddha's teaching because mindfulness helped me a lot. Meditation, right understanding, clear mental stage was so important in that period of time. Otherwise, I may not be here today. Okay, and some problems definitely it is accumulated from other uh, conditions. Maybe you don't want it to produce. It's not related with you directly. But somehow there is a problem you have to face. Just like 2002, yeah, right after we bought this land, American Body Center, the land of the center, in 2001. In two, uh, 2002, a gentleman came to the center and walked through you know, some places, then back to Houston without my permission, without you know, uh, uh, good communication. He spread the news that uh, American Body Center's land is contaminated. How are you going to deal with this kind of a problem? We have a uh, 500 acres land. It's communicated, and uh, Texas Buddhist Association is a not rich group. It's not rich. We cannot have that much money to deal with this kind of a contamination. So suddenly, there's a problem you have to face. At the time, I contemplate, contemplate, contemplate for some time. Then I made a final decision. I formed uh, a group uh, and uh, asking those uh, six people to collect samples from the land and uh, send those samples to labs to test is there any con contamination according to that gentleman where is contaminated. We collect those uh, samples and waters. 
And after arranging this, then I did not say anything about this problem. And I don't want to worry about this problem because my worry cannot solve this problem at all. I wanted to find something that I can deal with this problem. So form a group and uh, not, you know, uh, 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 people that relate with uh, uh, the temple and some outsiders too. They, come, they came and collect samples. Then I flew to Hong Kong. I told members, don't tell me anything about the land, you know, until the result is uh, completed. The test is completed. There's a con uh, final uh, results of the test. So after about 10 days, I received a phone call from a member. Remember Hong Yi, no contamination at all. <laughs> you know, those uh, waters you see are uh, like, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, like coffee color. Actually, it's uh, a, a kind of a chemical from leaves. You know, raining uh, in the water, on the land, then soaking the leaves, produce those color. It's not contamination. So finally, this problem is solved. And uh, fortunately, I did not continue to worry this problem for many days. I just deal with it, facing it, and try to find a way, what can I do at this moment? Okay, so, you know, many problems are around us. We have to identify uh, how to deal with it. Right now, let me read uh, some of the contents that I want to share with you from this book. This is from Samyutta Nikaya. Buddha said, different winds come from all directions. Some are clear, some carry dust. Some are cold or hot, fierce gales or gentle breeze. In the same way, sensations arise in the body, pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. When a meditator sees sensation as he does the winds coming and going, clear or dust laden, laden, oh. Uh, I, I, may, I may not pronounce this word correct, uh, correctly. L A D and Laden. Fierce or gentle, he will, he will fully understand them and be free from dependence on them. When he understands sensations perfectly, he will see beyond this conditioned world. Samyutta Nikaya from page 34. After I read this paragraph, because in this paragraph it mentioned about wind blowing something in the air. Sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's not clear. Suddenly I remember uh, there's a story about a venerable uh, Fo Ying. And, a ver uh, and also a lay Buddhist, Su Dongpo, in Song Dynasty. One day, Mr. Su wrote a poem. And uh, he said, uh, I pay respect to the Buddha. The Buddha is shining uh, and uh, brightly. Uh, no uh, any winds, eight kinds of winds cannot move me. I'm sitting just like a Buddha. I try to translate this poem to you in English, you know, in a very plain English. Yeah. Mr. Su described himself like a Buddha. He's showing, showing off. After he finished you know, the writing, <clears throat> he was so joyful and very proud. Then he wrote, you know, uh, the paper and asked one of his, uh, you know, servant, please take this to Venerable Fu Ying in Jinshan Temple. 
So the servant crossed the river and uh, arrived at the temple and uh, showed this poem to Venerable uh, Fu Ying. And uh, 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 let Fu Ying uh, say something about this poem. And uh, uh, Venerable Fu Ying, uh, after reading, suddenly he used the brush, write two words on the paper passing gas and uh, wrote it again and uh, give it to the servant. Bring this back to your master, back to Mr. Su. So Mr. Su uh, was so anxious to uh, see what uh, kind of uh, praise or what kind of uh, words that Venerable Fu Ying uh, write on the paper. So after he, uh, he opened uh, the, uh, the paper, then he saw these two words, passing gas. It's not polite. It's not good. <laughs> In Chinese, it says fang pi. It's not polite. It's not good. Okay, so Mr. Su was so angry. How come you can, you know, write these two words on my palm? And uh, you should praise me, and you should say some nice words to me. He was not very comfortable. He said, uh, prepare the, the boat. Let me cross the river to meet Venerable, uh, uh, Venerable uh, Fu Ying. He crossed the, uh, the river and went to Venerable Fu Ying's uh, place. He tried to knock on the door. But he discovered there's a paper on the door. And there are, two, two, there are two sentences. The first one is, you say, no winds can blow you away. Eight kinds of winds cannot move you. But how come just two words of a passing gas make you cross the river? <laughs> so, uh, Su Dong Po, uh, after he read those two sentences, ah, he said, okay, okay, uh, you win this time, okay, uh, and uh, let me go home. I don't want to talk to you today. <laughs> this one story. And uh, that means from this story, when everything is normal, we are normal. Most of the time, we meditate, we study Buddhism, we learn the Dharma. When things are normal, we are normal too, most of the time. How about think it's not normal? Are you still normal? That is a question. Because sometimes when we feel we don't satisfy, you know, we may have anger suddenly. And when, when we feel I don't agree with you, maybe we have a very negative attitude toward others and a very harsh words toward others. We should be clear on, at, at the moment. Finally, I wanted to uh, share also another story about Rainbow Fu Ying and also uh, Mr. Su Dong Po. <clears throat> One day, uh, Rainbow Fu Ying and uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Su, both of them sitting in a room, meditate for some time. After meditation, Mr. Su asked Venerable Hong Yi, How, what am I look, uh, uh, look like? Yeah, what am I look like? Yeah. And uh, Venerable uh, Fu Yi looked at him and uh, carefully then replied, Mr. Su, you look like a Buddha. Oh, he's so <clears throat> happy. Then Venerable Fu Yi asked Mr. Su, uh, the same way. What am I looking like? What do I look like? And uh, Mr. Su thinking in different way. Yeah. Then he said that this time I wanted to say something, you know, uh, 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 in different way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he said, you look like cow duck. Cow duck. Uh, cow waste. 
because when uh, when he see a uh, venerable Fu Yin sitting over there wearing black robe, uh, rope, you know, and just like a, a, a pile of cow waste, that is his uh, thinking. Venerable Fu Yin never say any words, just smiling. Mr. Su, back home, he was so happy, joyful. Today, I won the debate. And uh, his younger sister asked him, Why are you so happy today, brother? I, I won the debate after meditation. Uh, and he uh, tell his, his uh, sister about the story. Then his, uh, his uh, younger sister said, Brother, you are a loser in this debate. You did not win debate because you say venerable Fu Yin like a cow duck. Actually, your mind is full of cow duck. And a venerable Fu Yin's mind is full of a Buddha. So he said, you look like a Buddha. From this story, I wanted to say that uh, as a Buddhist, we have to remember this teaching. Yeah. We are what we think. We are what we say. We are what we do. Every time when we think, when we say something, when we do something, be careful, be clear. What do you, what do you want it to be? Okay, then perhaps we can manage our life, you know, correctly and positively and uh, continue to, you know, uh, enjoy, you know, every day's life. Thank you so much. Namo Buddha, Namo Dhamma, Namo Sangha. Namo Buddha, Namo Dhamma, Namo Sangha. Namo Buddha, Namo Dhamma, Namo Sangha.